All right, we've seen this problem before. We calculated the range for a large transport aircraft and um, under, with the parameters we were given found that the range was 13,400 kilometers. Now what we've been told is we want to, we've got the efficiencies, the combination of A to zero and L over D, I'm sorry, A is O, overall efficiency and L over D, um, that that has dropped a bit and by 1% in particular. And then the question is, well, we still need to maintain the same range. We're interested in having the same range. With that drop of this parameter, how much does the weight ratio change in order to still have the same range? And what's going to happen here is we're going to carry less passengers, um, so the fuel will be an overall larger part of this ratio, um, which means that the ratio will increase. And um, by having an increased weight ratio, the off we can offset the decrease in the efficiencies and maintain the same range. Of course, the price is we're going to have fewer passengers on the aircraft. And that's what we're trying to quantify is how many fewer passengers. So the way I'm going to approach this problem is I'm going to first find the new weight ratio. And then from there, I'll solve to find the difference in the weights, the, the final weight, or you could solve for the initial weight difference. Uh, we really just want that difference in the weights okay, from the um, initial configuration. Okay, so let's, uh, let's work the problem now. Uh, we've got Breguet range equation. I'm just repeating that again. And then we have Breguet range equation again, uh, but this time using the new uh, efficiencies. So I've grouped them and just called that whole uh, grouping new, uh, subscript new. And the same thing with the weight ratios. And so the two ranges are equal. Uh, that's the way we've set up the problem. We're looking to see how do we get the same range under these new conditions. So I can rearrange that uh, a bit because uh, QR over G is a common term. That, that goes away. And I find the relationship between the efficiencies and the weight ratios, or the log of the weight ratios. Okay, and then I can take that expression and solve for the new uh, weight ratio. So let's do that. So the new weight ratio is equal to the old weight ratio, and then it's raised to the power of the ratio of the efficiencies. Okay, so um, I can solve for that. Uh, to do that, I need to first calculate the initial over the final weight ratio um, from the original configuration. And that's 400,000 kilograms over 225,000 kilograms, and that's 1.778. Okay, and then I can plug that in. And so I'm going to raise 1.778 to the 1 over 0.99 power. And if I do that, I'm going to get 1.788. So, a, you know, a fairly small change, but that's going to have, it, you'll see, a, a fairly large change in the number of passengers that's going to result. Okay, so, you know, that number... Uh, has changed by less than 1% actually from here to here. So it's a, it's a small change in that sense, but let's see what happens. So um, the initial to final weight ratio, I can rewrite a tiny bit by writing the initial weight ratio as the sum of the final weight and the fuel weight. Sorry, writing the initial weight as the sum of the final weight and the fuel. Okay, and then divide by the final weight, so I get 1 plus the fuel over the final weight. Okay, and then what I can do is I can solve for the final weight. Okay, and so uh, um, what I'm going to do then is I, I know this expression, so the reason I'm solving for the final weight is I know what this is. If I know what the new final weight is, then I can compare it to the old final weight and I'll know how much uh, the, the number of passengers will have to decrease. Okay, so um, rearrange to find W final new in terms of the things we know. We know the fuel, that hasn't changed. Okay, so I just rearrange this and I'm going to get um, solving for W final new, one over the difference of the uh, new weight ratio and one times W fuel. All right, you can see that I'm going to subtract one from both sides, um, then uh, multiply through by the final weight 
and divide through by what is the weight ratio minus 1. Okay, so now I can solve for the new final weight. I know everything else over here, and if I do that, what I'll find is the final weight in this new situation that maintains the same range is going to be 222,042 kilograms. Okay, so I've lost about 3,000 kilograms of mass from the aircraft from what I had before, right? What I had before, the final weight was 225,000, and now it's 222,000. Okay, so this difference is 2,958 kilograms. All right, and we said that each passenger uh, brings on a weight of about 100 kilograms between the passenger's weight and the luggage uh, that they carry. So uh, at 100 kilograms a uh, passenger, um, that means that I need to carry 30 less passengers, right? You know, I can divide uh, this number by 100, this 29.58 by 100, so I get 29.58. Uh, but the 0.58, you know, if I not going to take 0.58 of a person, so um, I'm going to have 30 passengers less as a result of this 1% change in the overall efficiencies between the overall efficiency and the L over D. So the, the point being that uh, the range uh, aircraft performance is very sensitive to changes in performance parameters and uh, this also motivates why we care so much about um, lift over drag ratio, why we care so much about um, the overall efficiency of the uh, engines, the propulsion system, because small improvements or small decreases can lead to pretty big changes in what we care about. So we care about getting passengers from one place to another. The airlines make business by having more passengers. Um, so uh, this 30 passenger decrease would be a major problem. And that's only for a 1% variation.